To Future with Nerds. I'm your host, Alex Billings. With me, as always, my friend and co host, Ryan Lecknoy. Hello. And today we're going to be doing our first reactions to episode 1208, Cuteness Overlord, which was written by Kristen Gore and originally aired September 16th, 2024. So, uh, just like last week, Kristen Gore is one of the old writers who hasn't written since the original run. Okay. She's the one who's Al Gore's daughter. Okay. This is only her second actual, like, written by credit. Her only other one was Lilo's Homeworld, but she was a staff writer through, like, most of season three and four. Okay. Can you give a quick synopsis of this episode before we get into it real quick? Yep. So, quick synopsis would basically be Amy starts collecting Beanie Babies, and her daughter becomes friends with Sally the Orphan. Yes. And the Beanie Babies turn out to be evil. Awesome. This episode was great. Yeah, this one was fantastic. It was the best episode of the relaunch so far, it was awesome. Yep, I would agree. This became probably my favorite one that they've done. It is by far the best one they've done. It is like legitimately, you could slot this in season three and it mm -hmm. fits in great. This is a great episode. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's wonderful. I mean, it's a little dated with Beanie Babies, but it still worked really well. Yep. It was still really fun. It was funny. It was well written. Everyone seemed really in character. It was just a really well done episode. Yeah, and now it's not um it's definitely not like a top five episode of all time. I'm not going that no. far with it. But it's really, really on par with some of the un earlier future um, right? And it's great. And I'm glad you brought up that this is a, the second episode of a row with an old writer yeah, coming back. Absolutely. And the old writer again doing a really good job to make it seem familiar again. Well, yeah, like I said, both of this and the last one were people who hadn't worked on it since the original Fox run. They didn't work on the movies. They didn't work on the Comedy Central era. They didn't work on the first half of Hulu. They're just like the old, old stuff. But it still feels so familiar. Like this was the most in character I think everybody has been. Yeah. It was the most well-structured episode. Like we, I talked about the structure from some of the other episodes and how they don't seem to work well. This is the example of how it works well. When you have your A story, you have your introduction that introduces your A story and then your B story branches off of that introduction as well. And then your A story is separate from your B story for all of act two. And then act three, your B story and A story come back together so that everything wraps up together neatly. And this is the first episode since the Hulu run that's really had that strong A and B story that have been so cohesive together, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that the A story finished and then the B story finished and then we conclude the episode. It was those stories finished at the same time and it was great. They were different from each other, but they were also related to each other. It was awesome. We had great characters in it. Zap Brannigan is back and I love Zap Brannigan. Well, yeah, I was going to say, it's always good to have Zap in an episode. I just, I can't really find anything wrong with this episode. Yeah, this one definitely, it's like, I can't really find any faults with it. Like I said, it was great. It was actually like really funny too, which like we said, has been one of the downfalls of the season. 100%. Definitely became my favorite of the Hulu era. Easily. And again, like it's not a perfect episode. I'm sure on rewatches, we'll find issues that were like, ah, maybe I didn't like this as much. Or I guess the fact that the kids didn't recognize Bender is a little bit weird, but. Well, I mean, they kind of. It's not that big a deal. Them, but like they've all met all the crew a bunch of times. Yeah, like, it's not a big deal that nobody called him Big Daddy Bender. Like, whatever. Big big whoop. The rest of it was so so good. That's just one of those cartoon things, right? Like, in the Yo Lila Lila episode, the kids all get adopted by the TV studio to keep making the TV show. That's true, yeah. But they're all back at the orphanarium now, right? Like, that's just one of those cartoon things where it's like it has to go back to default setting. Yeah, status quo. But... They even like, I like how they're using Kiff and Amy's kids, how they are still given, like, they're not just background stuff like they could have been. They are being integrated into the series more as like additional characters, which is great. And I'm sure that's a way to give, um, who does their voices? It's the girl who does Amy, right? Who does at least the little girl. Uh, I'm actually not sure. Lauren Tom does Amy. I don't know if she does Mandy. I haven't looked at it. I probably looked at one point. M Mandy sounds very similar to Amy, which is why I would assume that we're just like, oh, we'll just, you get more speaking roles now as a voice actress. It works. I think Axel is Marty Slamarsh too, who does Kiff. Absolutely he is. Yeah, like, yeah, they're designed to sound like their parents, which is what they should sound like. So it's just more speaking roles for them. And it's an easy way to bring in new characters. And I mean, yeah, in the Hulu era, you've seen more of their kids than you have of Dwight or Qbert. That's true. Who voices Dwight and Qbert? Uh, I don't know. Not regular cast, but like not irregular cast either. Like there are people that are there semi-regularly, but they're not like main cast. Yeah. Now we did just see Dwight in the previous episode. We we should mention that. Yeah. And they were both in the NFT episode at the beginning. Yes. But there's been more of Amy and Kiff's kids, I think, in the Hulu era than 
Dwight and Kubert. Well, yeah, but Amy and Kif's kid were also introduced in this era, right? So they're trying to make the characters stick a little bit more, whereas Kubert and Dwight are established. They don't have to remind us that they exist because fans remember that Kubert and Dwight exist. But I think it is prudent to them to remind us, especially old fans, like, oh, by the way, like, Amy's a mom now sort of thing. Like, remember that. Yeah. Remember when we did that last year? That she's a mom now? Well, she's a mom now, so we have to keep reminding you of that because, you know, she's a mom who still is, I don't know, like, 24? <laughs> well, I don't know, because, again, they did the thing where they showed a calendar and it was the year 3024. So it's just like, is she in her almost 50 now? Like... Well, they get, they go through all those wormholes I and stuff know. on the series break, so it's like, uh, no, she's probably like 28. Well, but at the same time, no one else who doesn't go through the wormholes seems to age either. Exactly, but I mean, it's, just, it's the future. I they know. have the tar pits. They have the tar pits. It's just one remember? of those weird things where they like... They're not really addressing the fact that time is passing, but no one's aging. And it's not quite like The Simpsons, where they just retcon stuff that it's like, oh, well, yeah, well, Bart was now just born in, you know, 2014. But Fry always came to the future in the year 3000. Yeah, I was going to say, they can't retcon the day Fry left. I mean, the day he left doesn't matter. It's the day he gets there. Sure. Well, I mean, it kind of matters that he left in the year 2000. It goes a thousand years in the future, but either way. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, they could just see it was, oh, a thousand and twenty years in the future, right? Yeah. Either way, they've got the de-aging tar pits. They'll be fine, right? Like, they have that stuff. They'll be good. Yeah, again, it's kind of just one of those cartoon things where you just gotta, like, yeah, okay. It's been 20 years, but no one's any older. Yeah, if you want the show to keep going, this is gonna happen. Deal with it. And all of us are like, yeah, that's 100% fine. We don't care. Yeah. More episodes like this one, please. This one was awesome. Yeah, this one was fantastic. Like I said, there were so many, like, great moments like i'm gonna say some that i didn't pick as my favorite but that were really solid like when she's at the auction and she's like says to mom's like you own your own bidding paddle she's like i own my own number and turns yeah. it around and it's just a weird symbol yeah like that was fantastic they have zap brannigan looking at the mirror and be like oh those small beady little dots <laughs> for eyes it's horrible yeah yeah the nice little simpsons humor yep. where they're making fun of bart that he has no cuteness yeah despite having like it's so good they've done everything awesome like that episode zap had Great lines, like always, but it's easy to forget that his lines do have to come from somebody writing them. Yeah. And so those those great lines that were written back in the day are are great, not because Zap says them, but because somebody wrote them really well. And they did the same thing with Zap in this one. He's got really good lines that are delivered really well to make him still feel like Zap. Yeah, but that's harder to say, like, who wrote individual lines. Like, the main writers do the main bulk of the story, but individual jokes could be from anybody in the writing room. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean. It's like, it's easy to take for granted how good all of Zap's lines are yeah. throughout the series. And even in this episode, it's like they could have had him with really shitty lines that just happened. But no, he had still more great classic Zap Brannigan moments that everyone loves. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this episode other than like, we have two more left. Yep, two more. And if, if they keep getting, if they continue on this trajectory, the season finale is going to be the best episode Futurama have made. I mean, hopefully. We'll see. But. I would, I'd be thrilled for that. But like, I will consistently rewatch this episode. Yeah, this was a great one. If I could make a shuffle playlist of like <laughs> a slot episodes in and put them on random, this is slotted into that playlist 100%. 100%. Yeah. It's just, it's a great like fun standalone episode. Yeah. Like it's not one of the big important ones, but it was definitely really enjoyable. Yes, I and now you mentioned the Beanie Babies are a bit outdated. It's funny because they used like two outdated references because I also feel like it's like the Star Wars episode or the Star Trek episode. Oh, the Tribbles? Yeah. Uh, maybe, I guess. So they're all multiplying at the end. Yeah, the idea of some little thing multiplying, though, isn't crazy either. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, it definitely probably has some trouble with Tribbles and more Tribbles, more trouble reference to it. It's like an amalgamation of like, let's do that and make it Beanie Babies and then put them together in the year 2024 when nobody remembers either of those things, except for the people who are old enough to watch this show who remember both of those things and love it. I do think it was super funny, too, with the, the Beanie Babies, how they only made the Overlord one like move and articulate like the other ones you never saw them move yeah they just stood there super cute they always just seemed straight like plain even when they were on people they weren't moving they're were just like latched onto them <laughs> i know it was so good this episode is uh, also is that the first time we've seen the admiral the dupe admiral yeah admirella or something i kind of liked her because she was like a female zap brannigan which is also something that i'm like that could be a really funny thing down the road i would like to see more of her she was new. I could definitely see her recur in more dupe stuff. Normally, it just would have been the, uh, 
I don't remember her title, but like the one of Kif's people. But they couldn't do that because they wanted to make the joke about no one cares about Kif's planet. Yeah. Which is also great. But I was a fan of her character. I If, if we have a female Zap Brannigan alongside regular Zap Brannigan, yeah. that's so much Brannigan. And I'd be all for it. All for it. Yeah. Like I said, I could absolutely see her come back for more dupe stuff whenever they need their boss to come in. Yeah. Uh, so what did you end up going with as your best joke for the episode? Then? Like I said, there was lots to pick from here. Despite all of Zap's great lines, I did not go with the Brannigan moment. I, th- I assumed you would have. You love Zap so much. And there's one line that, like, his one joke got second, which is like, oh, they're just one giant reproductive organ. Like some humans, right, Leela? Like that one got second for sure. But the first joke is when they're at the uh, the orphanarium and Bender fixes the table. And then the little guy asks him if he can fix the spoon. He's like, right, I got it for you. Uh, how'd the spoon get bent in the first place? <laughs> Damien did it with his brain. <laughs> yeah, the little omen kid in the corner. And then Bender just turns to him. He's like, good on you, Damien. <laughs> Yeah, he's just so proud of a kid for bending something. But I thought that was odd. The line delivery of like Damien did it with his brain. Like, well, then the so cut good. to the kid like in the corner with the the light coming in from the window and the shadow and everything. It was so good. I love that. That one got me. That was the first joke of the episode that got me. That I'm like, oh shit, this is seeming like it's going to be really good. See, I went with the first one that really made me laugh out loud too, which was uh, when Mandy's in with Sally. And then Leela's showing them how it's like her old room. But then Sally's like, this room's so much better than mine. And it's like, and her toys are all covered in sauce. And mine have none. And she starts crying. And Leela's just like, do you want me to kick her? <laughs> that was <laughs> another good one. And Amy kind of like nods yes. She's like, yeah, go ahead. It's like, this was supposed to be a punishment in that you were supposed to see how good you had it. <laughs> and you're just complaining that your toys are too clean. Yeah, that you like this better. <laughs> I actually like how, they, how they've been doing Amy as a mother. Yeah, she's just trying her best. Yeah, she's like a very flawed mother. I mean, trying her best. There's also there's also a line of like, mommy did a wrong. Was it when you abandoned us to go toy shopping for a week? Well, no, but that was bad too. Yeah. <laughs> just drop them off. Pretend to be home. <laughs> pretend to be orphans until mommy comes to get you. Yeah, exactly. Free childcare. Yeah, I think she's like, her level of being a trying mom, but not a great mom is phenomenal because at no point do you think she's a bad mother. There's obviously points in this episode where, yeah, clearly she's a bad mother. But in general, she always looks like she's trying and she's just like, these kids won't shut up. I need a break. And I love it. I think they're doing a great job with that story arc. It's not, it's it's so in character for her, right? Yeah, well, and it's interesting that they were able to give them like the three kids at the three different ages so they can play with different stuff, right? Like they haven't really done a lot with their kids yet, but they have the option with the baby and the teenager and then like the kid kid. I'm sure they're probably waiting for reaction about how well people are liking these characters before they devote more and more time oh, to them. Yeah, I get why they haven't. I'm just saying like, it's nice that they've given her like options with what to do with the kids too, right? Because even in this episode, so the kids weren't super prominent. I mean, Mandy was. Yeah. But I'm sure if, you know, viewer response is like, oh, we like this dynamic, there'll be episodes written for Axel and Mandy and all of them. Like, they'll start to get in more in future seasons, which at this rate, I'm all for. They've been two of the better episodes have been the kid ones, right? So. Yeah, I like them. They're solid new characters. Yeah. All right. What'd you rate the episode? I'm going to give it an 88. I said 89. I was going to say 88 and 89 might be a bit higher than it deserves. Yeah. I mean, I've said before, I think just when we're putting it in comparison with other stuff from these seasons, they sometimes get a little boosted, I think. And that's the thing. Like, for this season, I have to give it high 80s because we have to show to nobody how much we appreciate this episode. But if in the grand scheme of things, realistically, it's probably more like an 85. Yeah, probably. But even for this season, the Hulu stuff, to turn out a legitimate 85, like, I don't think that's happened yet. Yeah, like I said, all the way down from the finale of last season was really good. I think Squid's Game or Quid's Game was a mid 80s. But yeah, but I don't I think I think this is better than that. I think those ones were good for the Hulu genre. I think if that was coming out in other seasons, we'd still like them, but they'd probably be lower 80s. Yeah. This one, I, I, this is by far the best episode they've made. Well, not by far, but it is high and above the best episode, which is the same thing as saying by far, so I don't know why I corrected myself. I mean, I think I would rate it as my favorite episode for the Hulu era so far. Easily. Like, it's the most familiar feeling. It's the funniest. It's the best written. It's awesome. Like, bring back Al Gore's daughter. Give her a season to herself. <laughs> Let her do more of this. Well, I think this is the only one she even worked on. I think they just contracted the one episode out to her. Oh, she's so good. This episode's so good, though. Yeah, I think that's the same thing with the other uh, Bill Odenkirk as well, though. I don't think they've been staff writers at all. I think they just did these episodes. And they did two of the better ones. Like, Yeah, they did two very solid ones. The Like, the last two episodes have been top three episodes. Like, I think they're both better than season 11, across the board. I mean, pretty much, yeah, at least. <laughs> 
and and Quid's game is better than season 11 as well. Like the top three episodes of this production season have been in this half. And the top two episodes probably, at the very least top two of the top three, have been these last two. Yeah. And it helps that they're bringing back the the old writers for it. Even if it's not like, it's not the main old writers. It's not Kim Keeler or not Kim, T- Kim Keeler. Keeler. Well, he's still there. Yeah, but it's like he didn't write this one, for example. Yeah. They brought, they still brought back people who wrote classic Futurama. Mm-hmm. And gave them a little bit updated world to work with. And it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. But we definitely want to hear from you guys. What would you rate this episode? Do you agree that it's the best one so far? All that all that fun stuff. Yeah, and then hopefully everyone will be back to join us next week when we do the Futurama Mystery Library. Which I have to assume is going to be their three-parter. Which is a little worrisome. Because after the original run, the three-parters traditionally have not been very good. But I mean, this season's been pretty solid. So hopefully it'll just continue to live up to that and it's not like there hasn't been good three-parters right like Na- naturama was not naturama is the only one i think after the original run that i like and that one took a couple of watches to like grow on me yeah so hopefully they find something maybe they have a better framing device this time around yeah we'll have to wait and see yeah so either way it's at this point i'm expecting magic i'm expecting it to be the perfect episode yeah, i'm hopefully optimistic Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. See y'all then. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.